I always like to, def to, to de uh, divide growth into demand capture and demand generation. Demand capture, meaning people that have high intent and are out there, and we want to cast a net and catch them. That would be pay, you know, uh, paid search. I search for something, higher intent, and I land on an ad. Uh, unfortunately, in B2B, uh, this is limited, especially when we're disrupting or creating categories. So demand capture is not the easiest thing in the world, but there's stuff that we do. For example, we optimize ourselves in G2 and other review sites. You optimize your paid search to the maximum that makes sense CAC-wise, and a lot of other things. Demand generation is about creating demand, pushing customers up that maturity curve. So you change their expectations to try something like you versus a traditional tool. This is more traditional marketing with a capital M, if you will. So uh, you need to optimize your demand capture to the maximum. It means that you need to squeeze every last drop of juice from your paid search, from your review sites, from anywhere that you could reach an influence where potential customers actually go to uh, in an, a lot more aggressive way than before. And on the other side, unless you're lucky enough to be in a market where there is infinite demand and the maturity of the prospect is high, and that's not the majority of the markets that these SaaS companies and SaaS stock are trying to disrupt, you'll need to go more into demand generation and perfect your story, your value proposition, and become critical enough in order for people to actually know about you and consider you. If you don't find a way to increase inbound in this reality, then you don't know when you're going to hit the demand capture glass ceiling that could kill your company. In order to make demand generation work, meaning communicating through outbound or inbound with people with less intent, you have to find a way to elevate your message and become more critical. And the best way to do that is to ask yourself what is going on. Can I actually connect my value proposition to that same problem I'm trying to work around? If there is recession, am I saving them money? Could they hire less people? Could I keep their existing team happier, more committed, so the customer experience becomes better? Connecting myself, building a business case that actually uses this thing that we're trying to work around. That's a trick. On the demand side, we're looking at meaningful leads that we're getting in, uh, less raw leads, more sales qualified leads. We have a lot of stages there. We start to get really interested in what we call sales qualified. Other companies call sales accepted, which would be a meaning by somebody relevant that has a high propensity to become an actual sales opportunity one step before. So this is the North Star to most of the people that work in growth. Uh, and it takes a little bit longer because it has a lag time between the lead and when we ask you all it, and that's why I have leading indicators, like a marketing qualified lead or just a lead that qualifies, right? But that's like the most important thing. From quarter to quarter, I look at pipeline in euros or dollars, SQLs, which is did I get enough people, not just one big lead that I might win or lose, and the number of uh, opportunities as well. So I knew that I know that I crossed that bridge. I look at all three because some of them, like the SQL, is telling me that I did enough work this quarter in order for pipeline to be generated next quarter because it takes a quarter or so to open an opportunity. And some of them are telling me that I'm doing okay with pipeline this quarter, but it's mainly related to the work that I did last quarter. So past and future indicators, I look at all these three. And then when we go to like content and to comps, we're increasingly trying to get better at measuring leading indicators like visits to our homepage and branded search combined. That is sort of a brand index that we put together that shows how many people are looking for us or coming directly to our homepage. It's a good brand indicator that we're looking at. And other leading indicators that have to do with readership and stuff like that, that we know are correlated to our inbound, but we can't measure it to perfection. I'm not a big believer in multi-touch attribution models. So um, it's easier to do direct attribution and growth. It's harder to really, really measure the inbound machine. But we know that on the greater scheme, it works for us really well because about 70% of all the demand that we're getting is inbound, and that's awesome. 
we teach them, our VP sales is very good at that. Actually, we coach them a lot and we teach them to be good listeners before they uh, pitch and, and talk. It's much easier to give the perfect pitch once you know what the person wants to hear or what they're dealing with, less irrelevant content. And then we work a lot on actually pitching, which is a good indicator that they know how to tell the story that we want to tell. And the story was my talk from before is about two things, making you understand the answers to some questions here and make you feel it here. So when they know how to perfect a one to three minute pitch, we know they're ready to take on anything. And uh, I think most of them are getting to that point and are not only informing the prospect, but are able to excite them by telling them a story that caters to their challenge that they want to, so that they want to solve, to give them hope that we could be the solution to get your salespeople to that level of uh, story-led you know, sales of a pitch. Then, and they start by listening, then I think they're unstoppable.